Now, Autolite and its 60,000 dealers and service stations present... Suspense. Tonight, Autolite brings you Van Heflin in Cornell Woolrich's famous Three O'Clock, a suspense play produced and directed by Anton M. Leader. Friends, get in step. Give your car a rep for pep. Replace those narrow gap spark plugs with wide gap Autolite resistor spark plugs. Your car will idle smoother, smooth as silk and satin. Give you tip-top power and performance on leaner gas mixtures. Actually save gas dollars. That's right, actually save gas dollars. Autolite regular type spark plugs have long been standard factory equipment on many leading makes of cars and trucks. And now six, that's right, six of these leading makers of cars and trucks have switched to Autolite resistor type spark plugs for factory installation on their new 1949 models. The new Autolite resistor spark plugs are the spark plugs of today and the future. Remember, you're right with Autolite. And now, Autolite presents Van Heflin in a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Francie signed her own death warrant. She signed her own death warrant, didn't she? You're a good husband to her, and yet she's too tomming you with another man, isn't she? And you made up your mind weeks ago to kill her, didn't you? Well, now at the last second, what are you waiting for? You've got everything down here you need to do the job. That box near the wall filled with explosive, two copper wires already capped. This alarm clock, what's holding you back? Memories of your honeymoon? She's too timing you with another man. Weigh that in your hand. All right, then, get to work. First, set the alarm. When she gets back from shopping around 2.30, you better set it for 3 o'clock. Good. Now then, wind it up. Now then, put the cap into the wires into the little holes you drilled in the box. Oh, no, 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 wait. That explosive's kind of tricky, temperamental. Don't touch that box any more than you have to. First, attach the wire to the alarm clock. I wonder why more people haven't thought of this. Probably wouldn't know how to go about it if they did. There. Now the cap into the wires into the box. Careful now, careful. There it is. Check it over now. You don't want any slip-ups. At three o'clock, the alarm goes off. It sets up a spark. The spark runs along the wires to the detonators in the box, and that's all there is to it. Don't just stand here. Get back downtown to the shop. Uh, uh, what, what are you doing in my house? Hey, Duke, somebody is home. That'll hold him a couple of seconds. Shouldn't have been standing there. Must have been down in the cellar all the time we was here. And you said you cased this place for three days. Get me something to tie him up and let's no. go. No, 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 don't tie me up. Don't tie me. Slug him again. Oh. Again. Okay. Uh. At the cellar down there? Yeah. See if there's any rope around. Quell a rope on a shelf down here. I'll get it. No, no, we'll carry him down, tie him up there. No, don't tie me up. This house is... Shut up, you. Oh. See if he has a handkerchief. Roll it up in a ball. Listen to me. This house All is... Right, go- shove it in his mouth. Shove it in. Oh. Take off his belt and buckle it between his teeth, too. Mm. Fast. Okay. What's he putting up such a fight about? This place is a lemon. Nothing in it. Take his legs. Okay. Mm. Did my last stretch just on account of leaving a guy in the open where he could put a squad car in my tail too quick. Okay, dump me here. Right. Now, give me that rope. I'll hold him. Hey, what's he putting up such a fight about? Look, mister, we ain't going to hurt you. Just leave you here in the cellar. He still ain't convinced. I can't figure him. Okay, that does it. All right, I'll tie him to this pipe. Otherwise, somebody's liable to come home right after we leave and hear him thrashing around. These houses are like matchboxes. I wonder what he's trying to say. Don't leave me tied up down here. I won't call the cops, I swear. it. This place is going to blow up, don't you understand? Explode. This, this house is going to explode. Who oh, cares what he's trying to say? Let's go. We'll pull another job tonight. Hey. This time, I'll do the picking. Well, it looked like a good setup, standing way off like it is. Hey, mister, will you relax? You'll never get out of them nuts. Hey, what's he so bug-eyed about? What is it, mister? This alarm clock over here? Yeah, what do you care what time it is? You ain't going anyplace. Hey, should we take the clock, Duke? Nah, 
Couldn't raise a buffalo nickel on it. Order it, Sue. Let's go. We got work to do. Right. Come back. No, I, don't, don't leave me here. This house explodes at three o'clock. Listen to me. It blows up in an hour and a quarter. Come back. Come back. Come back. Come. They're gone. The only people in the world who know where I am. I, I've got to get out. For suspense, Autolite is bringing you Van Heflin in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Holloway, can you help me with my income tax? Why, I'm just the guy. Here, just fill in form W-1066, IOU, RSVP, your telephone number, and ALRSP. ALRSP? Autolite resist a spark plug. Harlow, why, they ought to jail you for this. After all, I... Hey, do you and your income tax reports want to look good? Well... Then save, Hap, my boy. Save gas, for instance. Replace your old narrow gap spark plugs with wide gap Autolite resistor spark plugs. They make your car idle smoother, give you better performance on leaner gas mixtures. Actually, save gas dollars. Harlow, with me all tied up in taxes and internal revenue, you... For internal revenue for your engine, switch to wide gap Autolite resistor spark plugs. They're ignition engineered by Autolite to meet the highest standards of automotive engineers, to give you smoother idling, more mileage for your dollar. I'm worried. Ah, you don't have to worry, Hap. Why, with wide gap Autolite resistor spark plugs, you even cut down spark plug interference with radio and television reception. Remember, you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage Van Heflin as Paul in Three O'Clock, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. I can't get out. Nobody knows I'm here. Fifty-six, fifty-seven, fifty-eight, fifty-nine. Twelve minutes to two. It goes so fast, that second hand goes so fast. Five, six, seven. Less than 72 minutes. Help me. Somebody help me. Help me. Help me. <laughs> 11 minutes to two. Only, only 71 minutes. Not even that now. Three, four... Five, six. Francie, Francie, come home and get me out of this. I love you. I, I can't help being jealous, can I? I'm sorry I tried to kill you. It's because I love you so much. I'm jealous. But you deserve it. You deserve to die for what you've done to me. Can't you imagine how I felt that day last, last month when I came home? That, that you, Paul? Paul, oh, you, you're home so early. Are you sick? Another hmm? one of your headaches? Oh, I feel fine, honest. Why, why are you home so early? Well, I don't know. I just got lonely for you, and I said to myself, well, you're the boss, old boy. It's your watch repair shop. Now, if you want to close ahead of time, who's to say no? <laughs> Come on, hold still a second. Your, your, your lipstick is huh? smeary. <laughs> it, it is? Well, I was lying down. I, I guess well, I... Well, it's all right. Now, come on, pucker up. <laughs> well, you smeared again. Well, I'll fix it. As, as long as you're home early, why don't you rest a while? The morning paper's still in the den. Oh, I guess I will. I had a heavy lunch, pot roast and potatoes and apple pie. And... What'd you do today, Annie? Oh, all the usual. Clean the house, went marketing. Wish we could afford a car. I mean, isolated the way we are, walking eight I sat down on the couch, and there it was in the ashtray on the end table. A cigar butt, still moist on one end, still warm on the other. Any, uh, visitors today? What'd you say? I, I said any visitors today. No. None. Not even a peddler. You're a liar, Francie. You lied to me that time. Time. 42, 43, 44, 45... No clock has ever gone this fast. Of all the thousands I've looked at and set right in my shop, not one has ever gone so fast. 
It's quarter hours go around like minutes, and it's minutes like seconds. Three minutes to two. That's that's cheating me. It's not keeping the right time. That that second hand's whirling like a pinwheel. Make it stop somebody. When the clock says three, the, the house explodes. Make it... Oh, somebody's at the door. Come in, please. Please, please come in and find me and let me out of here. Please, please, please. Gas company. Gas company. The one call in all the day's routine from the earliest morning to latest night that can possibly bring anyone down here to the cellar. I am. I am. I'm down here. Don't don't wait for somebody to answer the door. It's not locked. Come in. Come in. Please, please. He's gone. He's gone. No, 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 no. He's coming around to the back. Why don't we... What? I said, why don't we go in and read the meter anyway? Even if nobody's home. Yes, yes. Company policy. We never go in to read the meter unless somebody's home. I'm sure they're never home when you want them to be. But I am home. I, I am. I'm right down here. I, look, I, I can see your legs through the window. All you have to do is to bend down and look in, and, you, and you'll see me. No, 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 no. Don't go away. Stay. Look, I, I'll kill you if you go, so help me. I'll kill you. No, 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 no. No, I didn't mean that. Please stay. Please stay. Look at the time. One minute past two. Fifty-nine minutes left. Not even an hour now. Fifty-nine minutes less eight, nine, ten, eleven. How long fifty-nine minutes seems when, when you're waiting for someone. Like the night that I, I waited for Francie to come home from a movie. And, and she was late. The night Francie was late coming home from a movie. Yes, in a pig's eye she was at a movie. She was with her boyfriend. Well, sure, I was worried. What did you think? You said you'd be home before 11, and here it is almost midnight. I was about to call the hospitals and the police. Oh, Paul, I, I'm sorry. Really, I am. All those those short subjects, and then the bus was late. I, I'm sorry you worried. Oh, I forget about it. How was the movie? It was all right. Nice western. Oh, a western? I thought you were going to see Three Musketeers. I, oh, well, I, I was, but I, I changed my mind. I saw Red River instead. Well, I didn't know that was playing in the neighborhood. Well, I... I went downtown. I thought as long as I'm out of the house, I might as well do a little shopping. Well, the stores were open tonight? No, I... Did I say shopping? I meant window shopping. Oh. <laughs> what was the movie about? You know, a western. A lot of shooting and riding. Right. How was uh, Gary Cooper's performance? Oh, good. I've always liked him. No, I didn't mean Cooper. Cooper's not in it. I, I meant uh, John Wayne. Oh, oh. Was that John Wayne? <laughs> you know, they all look alike to me. <laughs> those, those big hats. That was the night that she signed her own death warrant. Little things put the official seal on it, like the cigar butt in the living room, like the gasoline drippings on the street in front of our house, and we don't even own a car. And it wasn't a delivery truck either, because the drippings uh, showed that it stood there a long time, an hour or more. And, and like the time last week when... The time. Twelve minutes after two? No. Oh, no, that can't be. It was just two o'clock. It, it can't be that late already. Twelve minutes past two. Only 48 minutes and... Uh, less than 48 minutes. It's 47, 56, 55, 54. Look at that second hand. Fancy, 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 fancy. She's in the kitchen. She's, she's putting down her parcels. How can I make her hear me? There must be some way. And now, now she's at the hall closet. He must be hanging up her coat. Oh, Francie, thank you so much for coming home early. I love you so, and I, I need you. How, how could I ever have thought of hurting you? I must have been crazy, but I'm not now. Back to the kitchen. Why doesn't she come down here to look for something? She might stay up there all afternoon, lie down. She might wash her hair. She, she might stay up there till it's time to get supper ready. What she does is no supper, no Francie, no me. Francie, Francie, come down here. I know that you can't hear me, but come down here, please. Please come down here. Hello? Yes, Dave. I just got in this minute. 
Oh, Dave, I'm all upset. I have eleven dollars table money in the kitchen, and it's gone. And the wristwatch Paul gave me is gone too. We must have been robbed. She knows we've been robbed. I should get the police now, and they'll search the whole place, and they'll look down here. Well, uh, I'll look again, but I know it's gone. Paul will have a fit. Oh, no, 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 I won't. I won't, honest. No, I, I haven't reported it yet. We have to be so careful. Yeah, you're not kidding. I, I called Paul at the shop while I was out, and there was no answer. I hope nothing's wrong. Can't you guess there's something wrong if I'm not in the shop? But maybe you'd better come out. Okay, goodbye. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Sure, come on. If I go, both of you go with me. What time is it? Oh, no, no, it can't be 19 past 2. Only 41 minutes left. 33, 34, 35, 36. Tick-tock, tick-tock. Oh, there I go, there I go. Stop it, stop it, and think, think fast. Think like you did last week when you came home and she threw her arms around you and hugged you and, where that little liar. Hi, Paulie. Hello. No kiss? Yeah, sure, why not? Mm. Oh, what's the matter, hard day? So hard you can't even force a smile? I'll make you smile. I'll make you laugh. No. Kitty, kitty, too. Come on, smile. No, smile. No. Cut it out. <laughs> Stop tickling. Wait, wait. <laughs> Cut it out. What's uh, it? This in your pocket. Fancy, don't. A present for me? Yeah, I said don't. Give me that. All right. You don't have to grab. What is it? Well, it's, uh, it's fertilizer. That's what it is. Fertilizer? Yeah, a sample package. I, I figured maybe we'd start a little garden in the back. A few flowers, maybe. Oh. Well, that's a nice idea. That's just what I'll do. Yeah, well, I'll keep it down in the cellar. The fellow gave it to me, said that it should be kept in a cool, dry place. I'll buy the seed just as soon as you make up your mind what you want. Fertilizer. She never even suspected that it was an explosive. I brought other things home last week, too. Every day, something else. Some more sample packages of fertilizer, which I carefully packed into a soapbox that I had in the cellar. And copper wire and dry cell batteries. And this clock. And she never suspected the thing. She was so flustered trying to cover up the fact that she had a caller that I could have brought in a grandfather's clock under my arm and she probably wouldn't even have noticed it. Oh, but, uh, Francie, that, that doesn't matter now. If you if you'll just come on downstairs. He's here. Her boyfriend's here. Hello, Dave. Well. Just, just sit there, don't they? Don't they know that it's 28 minutes to three? Only minutes left now. Minutes, not even a full half hour anymore. Don't you think we ought to tell Paul about, about us? I don't know. How will he take it? Paul isn't narrow-minded. And we can't keep on like this. It's better to go to him ourselves and tell him about you than wait till he finds out. He, he's liable to think something else entirely. What's she talking about? I know he didn't believe me that night when I helped you find the furnished room and told him I'd been to a movie. I'm I'm so nervous and upset all the time. I feel as guilty as if as if I were one of those disloyal wives or something. Oh, didn't you ever tell him about me at all? I I told him you'd been in one or two little scrapes, but I let him think I'd lost track of you and I didn't know where you were anymore. Well, well that was her brother she she said that about. I'm gumming things up for you all right. An escaped convict for a brother. Oh, Francie. Francie, I didn't know. Why, why didn't you tell me it was your brother? Why didn't you tell me? Let's, let's go downtown and talk it over. No, with no, no, stay here. Don't, don't go downtown. Stay here. You shouldn't be seen with me. You would get into trouble yourself. Telephone Paul to come here and stay. Yes, 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 stay here with me. Please, stay. I'm not afraid. What can I do? What can I do this pipe? This pipe leads upstairs. Hit it with something. With what, though? What? My head. What was that? What? I didn't hear anything. I thought I heard a noise in the cellar. Yes, you did. You did. It's me. It's it's me. Want me to take a look? Yes, 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 mm, yes. No, yeah. I, I guess I was wrong. Let's go, Dave. Francie! Francie! Come down here and look. Only oh, 22 minutes left. Frenzy! Frenzy! Oh, Mama. 
Mama, Mama, Mama. It's gained another minute. Help me, Mama. Help me, Mama. Help me, Help me Mama. Help me. Be careful what you're doing, Bobby. What? Oh, that's a kid bouncing his ball against the house. Yeah, it's, it's a little kid. Bobby, come away from that cell. Oh, no, 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 let him stay. Stay, stay there, Bobby. Don't move. Did you hear what I said, Bobby? Bobby, just turn your head this way and you'll see me. A little more, Bobby, that's it. He's looking right at me, but he doesn't see me. Don't you see me turning my head from side to side, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth? He, he, he sees me. Bobby, what are you doing? Mommy, there? look. Does he understand what he sees? Oh, if, if he were only just a few years older, a child of seven or eight could understand that. Bobby, are you coming? I'm waiting. Stay where you are, Bobby. Make her come to you. Did you hear what I said? When I call you, I want you to come to me. Mommy, look. Funny man. Why, Mommy can't peek at the strange people's houses. Come on, dear. Funny man. Tied up. Yes, yes. Well, say goodbye to the funny man tied up. Bye-bye, <laughs> funny man tied up. Bye-bye, funny man tied up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let it blow up. What do I care? No, no, no. How much time is left? Ten minutes? Well, someone could come down here now, or, or even six minutes from now, or seven, and I could still escape. Forty-two, forty-three, forty-four. <laughs> the, the clock's... The clock's beginning to look like people like Mama. Oh, my head hurts. Mama, I'm sorry for what I've done. Paul's sorry. He won't, he won't do it again, honest. Just l let him go this time and not punish him. He's, he's learned his lesson. He'll never do it again. Poor Paul. Poor Paul. Oh, that, that must be Francie. It must have found the shop closed trying to find out if I came back here while she was gone. When no one answers, will that tell her that something's wrong? Why should she think I'm stretched out down here in the cellar if I don't answer the phone? Bye-bye, Francie. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Tick-tock. Bye-bye. Tick-tock. Seven minutes to three. In seven minutes, the alarm goes off. Seven minutes to three. The alarm rings for me. <laughs> that, that's a poem, Francie. It's a funny poem. Seven. Please let time stand still. Seven. Now it's six. What a precious number. Six. So round, so comfortable. Let it be six forever, not five or four, but six for all eternity. Let time stand still at six. No, that's five, 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 four, four. Bye bye, five. Polly says bye bye five. Good morning, Polly dear. Good morning. Wake up, sleepyhead. Wake up. Do you know what time it is? No. What time is it? Take your head out from under the pillow and see for yourself. All right. It's exactly one minute to three. <laughs> one minute to three. Oh, I, I was dreaming. One minute to three, not even a minute. Barely 50 seconds, 50 seconds to go. 50 seconds to live. Help me, Mama. Help me. Francie, Paulie needs help. He dies in 40 seconds. 39, 38, 37. He's not a bad little boy. He always means well, so help him. Help, little Paul. Mama, Mama, where are you? Quick, I haven't got much time. I have 20 seconds, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 
You say when you came in, he was all tied up and this alarm clock here was ringing. Yes. I say. Nancy? Yeah, Doc? Dead. Good heart failure. Oh, Paul! I'm sorry, ma'am. Now, look, just one more thing in this box. There was some wires going to it from the clock, and I pulled them out. Do you know what was in it? This box? Yeah. Nothing. It, it used to have some fertilizer in it, but I, I took it out this morning and used it. I, I've been trying to raise flowers in the back of the house. Oh, Paul loved flowers. Thank you, Van Heflin, for a splendid performance. Hello, uh, about my income tax report. Oh, forget it. Happen, be happy. Ask for those mighty marvels, those gas and money savers, those ignition-engineered Autolite resistor spark plugs. They're made by the Autolite men who make over 400 products for cars, trucks, airplanes, and boats in 28 Autolite plants from coast to coast. Autolite also makes complete electrical systems for many makes of America's finest cars. Batteries, spark plugs, generators, starting motors, coils, distributors. All ignition-engineered to fit together perfectly, work together perfectly, because they're a perfect team. So, folks, don't accept electrical parts that are supposed to be as good. Ask for and insist on Autolite original factory parts at your neighborhood service station, car dealer, garage, or repair shop. Remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now, here again is Van Heflin. First, I'd like to say that it's always great fun and a lot of work to appear on suspense. And second, come on out here, Tony. That's right, come on out. Ladies and gentlemen, Radio Mirror Magazine has asked me to call Tony Leader, the producer-director of suspense, down out of his glass cage up there for a very special reason. What's it all about, Van? Tony, I'd like you to meet Miss Ann Daggett, Western editor of Radio Mirror Magazine. How do you do? How do you do, Mr. Leader? As a suspense fan of long standing, I am very happy to have the privilege of presenting to you this scroll. It is in recognition of the fact that suspense has been chosen radio's outstanding mystery show by Radio Mirror Magazine, which will be on the newsstands tomorrow. Well, that's that's wonderful. And on, on behalf of our writers and our actors and musicians, Lud Bleskin in particular, and technicians without whom suspense couldn't even begin to suspend you, I... I want to say thank you very much. Well, my congratulations to Tony, and I'll be tuned in next week to hear Gregory Peck in Murder Through the Looking Glass, another gripping study in... Suspense. Van Heflin appeared by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of the Technicolor picture Little Women, starring June Allison, Peter Lawford, Margaret O'Brien, and Elizabeth Taylor. Tonight's suspense play was written by Cornell Woolrich and adapted by Walter Newman. Music was composed by Lucian Morawieck and conducted by Lud Gluskin. The entire production was under the direction of Anton M. Leader. Remember, next Thursday, hear Gregory Peck in Murder Through the Looking Glass. You can buy Autolite electrical parts, Autolite resistor spark plugs, Autolite stay-full batteries at your neighborhood Autolite dealer. Switch to Autolite. Good night. Here's great news. Suspense on television may be seen in many parts of the country every Tuesday night. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> 